So I'm trying on right here the all winner augmented reality solution right here is the C Genie. And uh, there's a there's a launch of the new VR9. It can support 6K for VR. So let's check out here the all winner booth. I'm gonna be checking out all the latest stuff. All right. And uh, and hi. So hi, so Alex. Good to see you again. So you have a bunch of new uh, announcements. Yep, we've got a couple of new processors. Uh, so this is one of the the new processors which supports uh, 6K. Uh, this is our VR9 chip. So earlier you were playing around with the uh, augmented reality headset, which is currently using our H8 VR. Uh, but sort of later on, maybe third quarter of this year, we'll go into mass production uh, with a new VR9 processor. So that's uh, that's 6K 30 frames per second. Yep. Or 4K 60. Yep. Depending decoding. how you yep decoding. So you, maybe we can have some sort of more intensive applications like video games. Uh, at the moment, a lot of these headsets are sort of just supporting video playback. So maybe we can support sort of richer content uh, on this platform. So this is sort of an early development board for ODMs, for IDHs uh, to use to, to make new products. So based. 6K is basically six, something like 6,000 by 3,000. So that means each eye can have 3,000 by 3,000. Yeah, you, you obviously you have to split the resolution to each eye. Um, so yeah, you can support sort of 4K. Um, maybe at 30 FPS. So this VR market that you are uh, powering is uh, uh, at the forefront of high resolution stuff. Like in the future, the, the, even before TVs and stuff support these kinds of resolutions. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are talking about like, do people need 4K TV sets, 6K TV sets? So I think a lot of the innovation in the uh, VR market will have a trickle down effect, uh, maybe into TV sets in the future where you, you might see sort of 8K. Well, I think already at CAS there's some 8K TV sets, um, but what will drive down the cost of those is probably sort of the VR market uh, and sort of the demand for, for higher resolution for VR headsets. So the VR9 is a, a ARM Cortex, uh, what, how, how do, you, do you define it? Yeah, it's an octa-core solution um, using ARM A80, uh, A53s. Octa-core A53 yeah. with a new GPU? Uh, with an imagination GPU. Imagination GPU. All right, so we got all, all that. Uh, and how soon is this on the market? Uh, it began to mass production, like I say, sort of third quarter, maybe around August time. August. And then you have another solution right here. Can you introduce these guys? Um, yep, so this is uh, Peter uh, and this is Bruce. Yes. Yeah, Bruce, hey. uh, he's the general manager for Business Unit 2, focused on, you know, tablets, VR and uh, Android solutions. And I'm Peter P. Uh, I'm the overseas sales manager uh, for the BO2. And now uh, I will introduce, you know, A63, which will come out in mass production, you know, in July and August uh, this year. And uh, it's a 64-bit chipset, 28 nanometers, with four core A53. And uh, the GPU is very powerful with Mali T760 MP2. And it and it can you know can support you know 2k 2k uh, yeah 2k yeah so uh this chipset is will design design you know for the high level tablets and the two in one tablets and some education tablets all right and uh, uh so that's 28 nanometer that means uh, uh you're talking about uh double the display Double the GPU, yeah. half the power consumption. Yes, something yeah. like that, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but still a quad-core ARM Cortex A53. Yes. And uh, so you're talking right now. You're talking with all the tablet uh, factories uh, uh, and uh, design houses. Design houses, ODMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How we, soon is this? On uh, in one or two months. One or two months. Yes. So the Almaner A63. This is the next. Next step right here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and just to correct uh, one thing, this will be running a Mali 760 oh, yeah. uh, Mali, GPU. Yeah. Uh, it's the imagination processor that's in our H8 VR yeah. uh, series. Which is actually in this one. And, uh, can, yeah, can that's we, correct. You have uh, the team of, uh, of, of, of that product over here. Hi. Yeah, cool. Uh, hello. 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 So Hi. who are you? Uh, what? Oh, what's your name? Uh, Daniel. Daniel Sa. Okay, yeah. I'm in Lucia. And you're working at this company right here, C-Gene. Uh, C-Gene. Yeah. And uh, C Gene is an augmented reality company. Yeah. 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 This is hey, the product hey, doing. He is the co founder yeah. of the C Gene, and uh, I work for the All Winner Technology. Cool. Okay. So uh, you put H8 in here, 
and uh, octa core and it, there's OLED display. Yes. Uh, two OLED display, 1280 by 800. Yes. And uh, is this on the market? Can people buy? Uh, oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. About how much? Uh, one thousand dollar. Around one thousand dollar. Yeah. You have a dual 1280 by 800 OLED, yeah. powered by the Albino H8, which has a Power VR, which is octa core. Yeah. A uh, seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. All right. Uh, and you have all these okay. different lenses here, or yeah. different glasses, or yeah. yeah. It's designed for those uh, wear glasses who wear glasses yeah. to make it clear when using this product. All right. Cool. And there's lots of other stuff here at the booth. Yeah, so we're covering sort of five main segments uh, at the show this year. So we have sort of uh, the usual tablet range, um, some sort of educational products also over here, uh, sort of VR headsets, point of sale machines, uh, also AI speakers are, are very popular at the moment. Uh, so what is going on with these? Uh, yeah, these are sort of a kid's sort of companion toy. Uh, so, so you can talk to this uh, and interact with it and it will sort of tell you a story. Uh, it has been singing a song for the last five minutes, so, so I kind of powered it down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's if singing. you want to keep your child entertained, you can just sort of plonk that in front of them and they can... Listen to the chicken. <laughs> talk, talk, you can talk to the chicken. It goes beyond listening. You can, to the, the you can talk to the chicken, what is yeah. This, what is the chipset inside? Um, for this will be... A33? Um, A33? Yeah. 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 So, this uh, using yeah the A33 on these products here. All right, story machine. Yeah. So it's a quad core, uh, quad core A, A7 in there, and with that kind of performance, it can do voice it could do, assistant. Yeah, it can do voice assistant. Um, it, it could do more, but at the moment they're they're just sort of using the voice feature on this product. Uh, this also kind of another similar application but maybe making a little bit more use of the processor. So you've got some sort of display here to show some emotions. Uh, I think there's some little eyes on there that move. And also you can see it supports the speaker. What does uh, it do when you click? Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> there's a sort of power on button here in, in a novel place. Um, so let's say these sort of aimed at keeping children entertained. Yeah. Uh, again, this is sort of a, a kid's tablet running on the 833 processor. Uh, and this product is a baby monitor. So you've got a, a little IP camera here that's, that's linked up to it. Uh, so you can monitor your children while, while you're not in the room. All right. Um, and then we have some slightly more powerful tablets. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. We can do like a, a panned video shot. So if I just go into here and select the camera. Uh, so if you if you hit this, it'll sort of pan around the room uh, and do a panned photo. It's got a turning camera. Yeah, so you can see this camera on the back rotates. Whoa. And then if you hit the pan feature, you'll prompt it to sort of auto rotate uh, and take a picture. Nice. So yeah, for sort of panoramic photos or 360 photos. Motorized panorama. Yeah. Video. Yeah, a sort of novel approach to the, the sort of usual camera that's supported on our tablet devices. Uh, and again, some sort of slightly more powerful uh, tablets running on the A83T. Uh, and then over here is sort of uh, A64, mainly A64 products. Uh, so at the moment, we've just sort of got a GMS testing for Android 7.0 on our A64 tablet platform, which is sort of the cheapest A64 solution on the market. So we're, we're currently sort of promoting that and just so showing a range of uh, solutions that are currently running uh, Android 7.0. And so uh, these are sort of fairly familiar form factors. Uh, again, there's a, a two-in-one uh, laptop, which seems to be quite popular at the moment. So you can just take that out the dock. Um, and that's running sort of some Google productivity store uh, apps. So you can do some desktop publishing or you can do some word processing and these kind of things. And uh, uh, just as an example right here, there's a... Uh uh, because there's a lot of talk about the Nintendo Switch, but actually uh, there's a, there was an all one part device. Yeah, there was earlier. a company. There was a company, as you can see, so Morpheus, uh, that did make a, a product similar to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so at the moment, that there seems to be a trend in the market uh, for this kind of product using a, a tablet, then. and these can sort of yeah, slide, in, slide, slide, slide off here. Um, and a similar approach, like you say, to the Switch, where 
uh, you can sort of but actually, put the product here and maybe interact with it at a distance. Uh, with the Joy-Con controllers, which yeah. they call it differently, but this is the icon. And, uh, so basically, the, you, you want to enable new innovation in the tablet market, right? You want to uh, enable new things. Yeah, it's always good to see people taking these kind of products and, like you say, adding a bit of innovation. Um, obviously, Nintendo are very strong when it comes to innovation, especially for... Uh, like the Wii and these kind of games consoles. Um, so this is a good example of a, another company doing kind of the same thing. Uh, and you can see from a lot of these products, they're kind of adaptations of the Android platform. Um, so here, like with the point of sales machines, this is another kind of application for Android. Maybe people think Android is only used for tablets or mobile phones, but actually it's a very flexible operating system with, with sort of many applications. So. This is sort of a point of sales machine here uh, with a little barcode scanner uh, and probably can read uh, NFC. Um, so you can use that for making payments. Uh, and again, this is uh, a similar product, uh, but just without the, the barcode scanner. This is very popular already, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, all retail sort of going and need these kind of machines. So it is a big market for point of sale machines. Um, and then here we have some um, like smart photo frame. Uh, this one uses gesture control, so there's a, a little sensor here. If I just sort of wave my hand uh, to the right, uh, you'll see it, it sort of goes in that direction. And if I wave it the other way, uh, it'll also scroll through the photos. Um, so you'll see, Ooh. you'll see sort of more products trying to use. Uh, less evasive sort of technology. Um, the same with the, with the AI speaker or some gesture control. Uh, a lot of companies are trying to incorporate these kind of new features into their products. What's this one? So again, this is a sort of more lightweight, just sort of standard uh, photo frame. So it may be if you, I don't know, you could buy this for your parents, uh, maybe you're out, maybe you're at the, the Hong Kong fair, and you, you want to send a cool picture of something new, you could beam that across to the US and it would be displayed on... There's a Y10. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a new chipset. Yeah, so uh, this new Y10 is a yeah, new, it's a new, it's for a new photo new, frame. Yeah, yeah, for photo frame, uh, dedicated. Yeah. So what kind of specs does it have? Is it, is it, uh, it's not for touch screen? No. Yeah, no touch screen. No touch no, screen? No touch screen, yeah, yeah. But connected to the internet? Connect to the internet, yes. And uh, you know, uh, this uh, y, Y10, uh, the performance will be similar with, you know, A33. So A33 performance, quad core A? A7. A7? Yes. Uh, but uh, some different functionality in there, so it's for the photo frame. You, you want to sell 100 million photo frames? Yes, of Very course. affordable, right? Yeah, 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 because we see, you know, the market chains and a lot of, you know, uh, customers want something, some product like this. Yeah. And uh, if you were talking about the, the all-in-one VR, how's the market going with all-in-one VR? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of demand, uh, obviously, in China. At the moment, it's sort of mainly the domestic market that's the area uh, of growth. Uh, but we're hoping with the VR9 uh, that we can get more penetration into the international markets because we can support sort of richer features um, and, like I say, maybe more gameplay. Um, so yeah, at the moment, still a little bit in its infancy uh, for the, the all-in-one VR market. These are kind of better for some vertical applications, um, maybe sort of some specific for education. Um, also, this is a good example of, of maybe some vertical application. Um, like I say, you can use these, these cards to, to sort of prompt the device. Uh, so you could imagine a school or education using something like this, and maybe you want to learn about, I don't know, dinosaurs or space. Uh, and these cards will actually um, prompt this to, to sort of bring up graphics that are relevant. All right, let's, let's walk over here. Uh, you're showing off a development board? Yeah, so here we have... Which uh, one is that? Uh, this one is the A64 development board. And As it's... The, at the moment, obviously, it's got a, a little uh, LCD display mounted on the top of it. Um, it's provided by ok Okochi. Yeah, so this will be commercially available. People can actually sort of buy this, uh, use it to develop applications based around our A64 processor, which is, like I say, currently supporting the latest Android version. All right, but it's a different platform than the Pine64. It's just a... 
Yeah, it's, it's just, a different it's development a, board. Yeah, it's just a different development board, maybe with some slightly different applications, um, but on the same on the same processor as the Pine sixty four. Um, obviously, the Pine sixty four is quite a, a smaller form factor uh, than this board. All right. Um, we we have a couple of other modules uh, over here. So we have a Qualcomm chipset um, based on a, a couple of Qualcomm yeah. LTE chips. Um, so we tend to focus more on, on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So we've been working with Qualcomm to support their, their 4G uh, LTE chips. So this is something that we've worked together with Qualcomm. So Which, what are we looking at here? It's uh, like a module that would slot into a yeah. main board. Um, so there's a Good. couple of, this is maybe the 8909. And what chips are there? Um, so I say it's the MSM 8909 from Qualcomm uh, with 4G LTE. Uh, and then there's the, a slightly smaller board, uh, maybe it's the 8940. And is uh, are those uh, like Snapdragon uh, 200, 400 series kind of? Yes. Yeah. Is the, is the one you've, you've been marketing also in tablets, right? But now this is more for IoT or...? Still mainly for, for the tablet market, just for sort of developers to, to play around with maybe applications that require 4G connectivity. All right. And uh, you do AI speaker. Yeah, so this is like a really hot sort of product at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of demand on the market for supporting voice platforms like Alexa. Wi-Fi is not connected. See, she knows I'm talking about her. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, as you can hear, the, the Wi-Fi is not connected. Um, but yeah, well, ODM called Tonely uh, makes this product. Obviously, it's sort of marketed more at the US, UK, um, and also Germany currently supports Alexa. So this isn't something we'd sell domestically. This would be aimed at the international market. Nice. So total support for the APIs from uh, Amazon Alexa, potentially Google Home? Yeah, maybe in the future. There's sort of a multi-mic array solution in here with dual mics uh, that can use sort of far field uh, detection um, to obviously detect the wake word. Uh, and you're going to see, like with the, the gesture control, this kind of in, in, um, sort of hands-free technology being applied to, to a lot of solutions. So I think in the speaker market it was sort of Bluetooth, then it was Wi-Fi, uh, and now we're moving in the direction of, of sort of voice control, um, similar to sort of Siri and what And you support that on, on the R16 with Tina OS? Yeah, so the R16 is sort of our smart home. Um, chipsets. So we have sort of R40, which uh, a couple of companies are making development boards using that, uh, and another chip, R18, um, that sort of supports Trust Zone and some other features. Uh, and all of those products are aimed at maybe uh, robot vacuum cleaners, um, smart speakers, uh, these, these kind of uh, solutions. All right. So that was uh, lots of uh, new things here at the Hong Kong Fair. Yep. So and some customers coming by and uh, Yep, so we'll, yeah, we'll have some meetings later uh, to talk to some customers and obviously I'll, I'll have a wander around the fair myself and see what's out there on the market. Um, and maybe there's, there's more stuff in the Hong Kong fair built around our, our application processes, but at the moment these are just uh, a sort of sample uh, of what's available on the market.